Okay, well, I, apparently I was, I'm told, was first brought here in 1941. I was, would be two years old then. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was an investigator here, summer investigator. Okay. Well, we didn't uh, come down during the war years, and the next year we were down was 1945. So I remember the war ending then and looking down Main Street and seeing all the celebration. Well, he was a researcher here. He was professor of anatomy and chair of the department at Syracuse. And um, every summer it, we'd all pack up and come down to its hall. He was a part-time director. He was still chair of anatomy at Syracuse, taught was there for nine months and then two months, two and a half, three months here. Um, and still maintained a laboratory, still would himself physically be belly up to the lab bench on a daily basis. Uh, would occasionally go on um, uh, trips during the uh, other nine, the winter, fall, winter, spring part of the year, uh, fundraising. So would visit Washington, the uh, Rockefeller Foundation, or um, some of the other philanthropic uh, um, agencies to scare up money to build, do such things as build the Whitman, now the, the uh, road building, and uh, things of that character. Um, but the laboratory seemed to thrive with just this uh, tradition since its founding of a part-time uh, director of very much, uh, uh, um, and biology was of a character that it didn't require the much more intensive administration that we now see of, of the MBL or any other institution of its similar character. Oh, he was, he was strongly in love with the place and uh, very committed to um, uh, the welfare and the, uh, of the laboratory and spent a good deal, particularly when, it, when he was director, a good deal of his uh, time and energy in thinking about and in executing uh, um, activities that, that promoted the, the MBL. Yeah, I worked for the Marine Resources, what was then called Supply Department, as a collector, summer collector. And uh, I was assigned to the, the truck, which was uh, headed by Jeff Leahy, a permanent employee. And he had two college kids, uh, me and one other, who helped uh, do the collecting. And we'd go all over the Cape, uh, and even occasionally off Cape, to collect specimens for either the courses or for investigators. Right, so that day would be a limulus day, for example. So we'd go out to, uh, um, to uh, Pleasance Bay, uh, we'd put a, a large and quite heavy boat up on the truck, wooden boat, and so we'd offload the boat and uh, motor out into the, um, into the bay and pick up horseshoe crabs, put them in the boat, and then come back to the landing and unload all the horseshoe crabs, get the boat back in the truck, and then uh, put the horseshoe crabs back in and then drive back to the laboratory. The supply department was selling them. They uh, sold them as live specimens, and they uh, preserved a whole lot of different kinds of things in formaldehyde, and which they, uh, at least the larger specimens, the dogfish, the horseshoe crabs and stuff, uh, kept in large um, uh, barrels in uh, the uh, kennel house. And then they also housed much of the summer crew in kennel house. So uh, those folks were smelling uh, formaldehyde vapors all summer long uh, from the, uh, these so-called terses with preserved specimens. So that, that was then, of course, when we were less alert to uh, environmental insult than yeah. we are now. It's, it's really interesting to think back about what were the controversies then. Do cells have really a physical cell membrane? Was well, very much up in the air. Uh, what are uh, 
what is the endoplasmic reticulum, that this notion that there's this uh, vast web of, uh, uh, of membrane, membrane structures in the cytoplasm of the cell was a totally novel concept. Did the Golgi apparatus even exist, or was it a, a fixation artifact? All of that was um, uh, subject to very lively debate back then. Well, I'd, uh, I did a sabbatical in Cambridge in England uh, in 1973-74, and then in 1975 I was my first summer here as an investigator. But I'd become quite interested in the um, sort of social mo uh, locomotory behavior of cells as they migrate around and interact with one another and how this uh, governs the, the patterns of, of cells and I was particularly interested in the uh, role of cell migration in the invasiveness of certain cell types, invasion into other tissues. Mm -hmm. And um, there had been, back in uh, uh, all the 1915, 1920s, uh, li um, let's see, Loeb, um, wasn't Leo Loeb, maybe it was Leo Loeb, uh, looked at this problem with the modal blood cells of horseshoe crab. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and the, the observations I thought were interesting and germane to this general question. And so, uh, with the light of more modern paradigms of what's going on and uh, uh, sought to reinvestigate that. And so horseshoe crabs, uh, fortunately for me, don't occur in California. And so I couldn't, wouldn't be shuttled to the, uh, any of the West Coast marine stations, but instead uh, came back to its hull to do that research and lived in the cabins. We came back for yeah. six years living in the cabins. And, and that, that research has sort of um, uh, over the years migrated more into a, um, an interest in uh, comparative immunology. Mm -hmm. The blood cells are major players of the horseshoe crab and of course our modal blood cells of human uh, innate immune system. And, uh, but has also become more uh, uh, grounded in uh, protein biochemistry. So isolation, identification, characterization of various immune effector proteins of horseshoe crabs. And that um, uh, drift into protein biochemistry um, uh, began in 1982 when I shared a laboratory with, uh, here in, at MEL, with Jim Quigley. Uh, uh, he and I had both found ourselves, well, he had been an investigator here at MEL uh, in the late 1970s. Mm -hmm and they lived just a few houses down for us, from us on, um, Memo on, uh, on uh, not Memorial Circle, it's... Devil's Lane? Devil's Lane, yeah. And um, so we became friends then, and then we both completely by accident, or in completely independently, found ourselves on sabbatical in the laboratory of Henry Harris at the Sir William Dunn School of Pathology at Oxford mm -hmm. for a year. And it was kind of funny, the year before, Margaret, my wife, was talking with Joan, Jim's wife, uh, there just on the circle. And, uh, well, we're not going to be in Woods Hole next summer. Oh, we're not going to be either. And, well, where are you going to be? Oh, we're going to England. Peter's on sabbatical. Oh, my goodness, Jim's on sabbatical in England. Uh, where is he? Oxford. Oh, Peter's. In. And then we found it. we're in the same laboratory. And so then afterwards, we decided we'd like to share a laboratory at, at, at MBL. And in 1982, we uh, planned, what we planned to do for research was to characterize the proteolytic system that um, uh, resolves or, or proteolyzes the blood clot. And Jim is a, a, a protein, protease biochemist and had worked on plasminogen activator and plasmin and dissolution of the blood clot and all of that in mammals. And so we looked for something similar in horseshoe crab, which also builds a 
extracellular blood clot that presumably during wound repair in Sashi wants to get rid of and um, so presumably has some sort of system of proteases that do this. We found nothing. We did just everything we did didn't get us anywhere. Um, but we did, quite by chance, discover a protease inhibitor in the plasma of the horseshoe crab that turned out to be the first example of a class of proteins that is quite important in immunity, the uh, thioester proteins. First example of that in an in, in invertebrate. And so that was proteins, it was protein biochemistry, it was purification of proteins and characterization. And so that um, uh, um, re redirected the research more towards the uh, system of immunity. And we've been, I've been uh, pursuing that uh, direction of research ever since. Mm -hmm. Particular interest in immune effector agents and particularly proteins that are evolutionarily conserved, that are found in humans and are found in horseshoe crabs, mm -hmm. that presumably evolved very early in the evolution of metazoans, and that are important enough to have been maintained in these very different um, evolutionary lineages over half a billion years. Um, animals that live in very different lifestyles and all of this. And so this was one of those. And there have been one or two others that I've spent time with in the intervening uh, decades. Oh, well, I have extraordinary affection for the MBL. It's, uh, my wife and I met here. We were both students in the Invertebrate Zoo course. I had enormously enjoyed as a child being here, as a, being an MBL brat. Um, and um, I've profited enormously from having this as a platform to do my research. I'd say over half of the research papers that I have are based on research here. And um, so I very much look forward to coming down during the summers and uh, uh, spending time in the laboratory, time in the town, time out in the water uh, fishing and stuff. So um, Woods Hole and the MBL have been a real major, major presence in my life. And uh, I feel, again, great loyalty and, and affection.